uh, biggest uh, payments providers, uh, payments aggregators globally, aren't uh, isn't that right, Alexei? Hi, can you hear me well? We can hear you well, and we see you've got your guitar in the background. Are you going to be uh, breaking that out as part of your presentation? <laughs> Probably not today. Thank you. For <laughs> it's a tease. Okay, okay next time maybe um, you can give. Um, uh, yeah, you, okay, great. Um, wonderful. I'm, we're running a bit late, so I'll jump back and let you jump straight into it. Do you want to share your screen? Here we go. And yeah. then hide in the okay. swap group. This one. There okay. You see my screen, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, wonderful. I'll jump off. Thanks. All right. So, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today at the API Days London conference. It takes place virtually this year, but I believe that everybody is enjoying this as much as I do. Today, I'll be talking about Open API and how we use it in our API development lifecycle at Adyen. So, first of all, let me quickly introduce myself and then move on to more important stuff. Uh, my name is Alexey Akimov. I am based out of Amsterdam, currently head of API at Adyen. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Twitter. Uh, my primary focus is related to API strategy, API design, technical documentation, developer relations, basically everything else that leads to great developer experience. And obviously, APIs is the core of that. Uh, then, of course, a few words about Adyen, because it's important to understand for the topics I will cover today. I hope that all of you already heard about Adyen, uh, but just in case, it's a global payment service provider headquartered in Amsterdam with international offices all over the world. We've been constantly recognized as an industry leader in the payment space. Here are some examples of that. Uh, we are serving enormous number of companies from completely different industries. Here are again some examples of fantastic brands uh, that process payments with Adyen, both e-com, mobile, and point of sale. And as I mentioned, we operate globally. So we support more than 200 various local payment methods, uh, have own data centers in different parts of the world and still growing. Uh, we've observed and still observing fantastic growth of our platform. Uh, and even in these times, we're able to scale up and support all the businesses all over the world to overcome the COVID crisis. Uh, the beauty of Adyen platform is that this is all powered with APIs from the day one. And if we talk about our API landscape, we currently have 20 plus different public web APIs with more than 100 different versions that we have to support. And in total, these APIs provide about uh, 150 endpoints, each solving as a single user task or covering a wide range of business cases. And of course, this all comes with great responsibility and brings a lot of challenges, uh, like reliability, performance, scalability, security, everything like else that is similar to any other company operating in the API space. And you can imagine how difficult it is to deal with all these challenges uh, at this large scale that we observe. So we learned a lot of things that can help us with the challenges. And uh, a lot of such solutions, of course, are based on different technologies and processes. And one of the surprising findings for us was the value that we can bring with using some of the industry standards like OpenAPI that can greatly help us improve the quality of our APIs, the consistency, but also help to make our API decisions faster and move faster and then speed up the development and testing processes. If we talk about API, I hope that everybody in this room is already aware of this, but uh, just a few words, Open API is formally known as Swagger. It's a standard format to describe uh, HTTP APIs. It's important to realize that it's both human readable and machine readable. And uh, basically, usually the API description file contains information on different endpoints, HTTP verbs, parameters for each operation, of course, the models that are used for request responses and for everything you need, authentication information, and uh, anything else that can be related to your Open API. So Open API can be uh, created in two formats, JSON and YAML. It depends on what you prefer, what you like. Also, if you prefer to create your OpenAPI files manually by hand, uh, then probably YAML is better choice, but many people are just generated from source code or use API design tools. So um, this is how it usually looks like. And in general, we saw that this format is quite mature when we were uh, looking at different, of course, technologies 
and different formats that we can use to describe our APIs. Uh, of course, we recognize that it's also steadily evolving. There is a new version coming soon with uh, better support of JSON schema. And also we saw that all, all the other uh, big companies are joining this initiative. So Postman also recently joined, which again recognizes the fact that OpenAPI is uh, the standard for everything. And there are a lot of smart people thinking about that. And I know that uh, some of uh, OpenAPI folks are also in this conference. So uh, very happy to see that it's moving forward. So, uh, and when we started thinking about use cases, how we can apply and how we can improve, basically probably we went through the road that everybody else uh, also usually goes. Uh, when we think about OpenAPI and Swagger, the first thing that comes to your mind is documentation. Uh, it's quite popular tooling. Uh, people start with using Swagger UI, Swagger Hub, but there are also other tools like Stoplight, Redoc, uh, a lot of open source uh, uh, solutions on the market. And uh, in the open API file, you can easily have documentation, which means reference documentation for your APIs, but also examples. We saw uh, that it's bringing a lot of value, especially if we combine together extensive documentation and examples with multiple use cases in the same file. And especially with the complexity of our APIs, with the number of versions that we have, uh, it was working really well. Uh, we also designed our own API Explorer portal for that, uh, that we go into open source soon. And uh, we saw that documentation can be bringing a lot of value here. Also, if you uh, focus on adding more context, thanks to Markdown support, to Common Mark, uh, you can have quite extensive documentation here. Uh, which is not only complementary to your main documentation website, but becomes valuable on its own. Then, of course, it's important to realize that OpenAPI format is not only human readable, not only documentation that you can generate and display on your website, it's also machine readable. And uh, in this case, there are a lot of other use cases that you can benefit from. Uh, one of the other popular use cases is to have libraries. So with having an open API file and using a lot of open source tooling that exists out there, you can generate different libraries and we utilize some of them to some extent to create libraries uh, that we then share with our customers on GitHub. This really speeds up uh, the integration process with our APIs. Uh, of course, we have to tweak the results to provide the best in class developer experience, but still, uh, by just the fact that we have open API files and can use tooling to generate these libraries, uh, it means uh, that we can uh, move faster with providing these assets. Uh, then in general, we see open API files as a valuable asset that you can share, and this becomes an API contract between other teams that are using the same APIs internally, if you think about internal APIs, or uh, the contract that you're sharing with your customers. So I would say every API provider should be sharing open API files on GitHub like we do. And uh, then API consumers can easily reuse it for multiple cases or just follow the progression of your APIs, maybe do the diff of different versions and um, explore this race pull requests and contribute to API development altogether. Uh, of course, Based on the fact that OpenAPI is becoming so popular, there is a lot of tooling that uh, is using this under the hood or can also help uh, your API consumers to explore your APIs. For example, with Postman, you can uh, just import OpenAPI file and this already provides a good start for a Postman collection. Uh, we see these use cases coming more and more often for our customers, but also internally when we discuss different API designs and we want just to play around. So, uh, Tooling support helps us a lot with that. And uh, in general, if you think about the API development lifecycle, uh, a lot of organizations, and we at Adyen uh, focus more and more on having API design first uh, processes when we first discuss the API design, uh, test it with different consumers, uh, uh, include different people from the technical and business sides, and uh, use tooling like Stoplight or Swagger Hub to agree on how the future API should look like. Uh, a lot of these tools like Stoplight and Swagger Hub under the hood uh, use open API files, which also makes it easier for us than to reuse these files later for all the other use cases. For example, here you can see the designer that Stoplight provides. And if you search to switch to the 
code tab, then you can see that under the hood, it's again the open API file that you can probably just edit here or import or export and then use for something else. Um, Arnaud just had a very interesting talk on LinkedIn, uh, and we also see a lot of benefits of using open API files together with uh, LinkedIn tools like Spectral, uh, because obviously to introduce consistency to your APIs and also to help your developers make API decisions faster. Uh, you, usually you need something like an API style guide. Many companies have them, some open source them. Uh, we also have one at ADN, but it's always difficult for somebody who is involved in API development to remember all this 100 something rules that uh, we describe in our style guide. So uh, we see a lot of benefits in having uh, automation there. And uh, automation can, of course, help us um, link the open API files that we discuss and design uh, for future projects. At the same time, it really uh, provides good uh, process and uh, platform for introducing consistency in existing APIs. I can give some example here. So, uh, for example, we know that there is some inconsistency in new versions for some products and in old versions for some products. And then with LinkedIn, you can automatically detect all these instances and compare uh, how can we go about it. And uh, is it's possible maybe to rename some fields or to go one other API direction. And this will be a strategy to introduce consistency eventually. And then with LinkedIn, you can first start um, is showing just tips how the API should look like for some certain cases, and then uh, switch this to warnings, and then maybe at some point introduce zero tolerance to occurrences of some specific API decisions, and then uh, yeah, it will become just an error eventually. And uh, with the support of tools like Spectral, it can be done pretty easily. Uh, and this is one of the examples how uh, the LinkedIn uh, reports can look like. Uh, but obviously, as you saw from Arnold's presentation, uh, the rules can be quite complex and uh, it's power that can help you introduce consistency. Uh, of course, uh, another great benefit from uh, using uh, open API files is that uh, there is tooling that can help you generate server mocks and uh, obviously, then you can separate front-end and back-end development. For example, if uh, you already agreed on some API design, how your API should look like, then the front-ender shouldn't wait for the back-end developer. Uh, and then if there are any changes uh, that we want to introduce to this API based on new uh, feedback from front-end developers or back-end developers who got new ideas how they should look like, you can just change the API contract and regenerate the server mode. And uh, the development then go, goes uh, hand by hand. And uh, also we use open API files for uh, monitoring and landscaping what's going on with our public APIs in general. Uh, this is maybe not the most um, obvious use case, but we found it interesting. We just having an overview of all the API files uh, uh, as a snapshot of uh, what's going on with APIs in your organization. We can also see, okay, here's a new addition, and then this is actually leading to this change which might be breaking for some customers, and then there is a new version of APIs coming, and at the same time something was deprecated, and this gives us good idea how we can uh, talk to our customers and maybe uh, eventually sunset this API version. And last but not least, uh, with Open API you can introduce custom attributes, which also gives you a lot of power. So in our case, for example, uh, we introduce quite some uh, information for the documentation purposes, but also to help with API evolution, maybe show deprecation messages and explicitly mention when some certain field was deprecated. Um, so basically, uh, it really depends on how you create APIs in your organization. Uh, the life cycle can be very different. Some start with design and then development, testing, documenting. So it depends on the diagram that you can build based on your processes. Uh, at the same time, uh, I would really recommend you consider having open API uh, format and files involved on any of the stages because um, this is just a contract of your API, how your API looks like, how it's evolving, and how then it's behaving when you go live with that. 
Uh, the main takeaways that we learned for us that, uh, first of all, OpenAPI is not only for docs. Uh, of course, for docs is the most popular use case, but uh, yeah, you saw that it can be used for many more other things. All, Open API is not only for REST APIs, although REST APIs are super popular, but it can be used also for other APIs that you have internal or external. Open APIs is not only for open APIs, and here we talk a lot about open banking and other open things, but uh, despite the fact that the term says open, uh, it can be used for internal APIs as well. And then in general, it can bring value on any stage of your, your API development lifecycle. We also saw uh, recognition from government organizations so like the Dutch government and UK government adopting open API format. And this leads me to the conclusion that in general, it deserves to become a standard way of exchange, exchanging API contracts in the fintech industry or maybe everywhere. It will make our lives so much easier. Thanks a lot. Uh, you can find me on Twitter or on LinkedIn if you want to have more questions. Um, yeah, and then I hope I still have maybe a few minutes to talk about this. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Alexei. That's a really great conversation uh, as far as or presentation showing us how open API specification taking that time up the at the front end of design of building out your open API specification and defining your um, API in that way can then lead to all of those benefits and create all of those values as you go along the um, uh, the API design life cycle. It was, it was really great way to show us uh, the benefit of taking that time. The, the, the one of the things, so one, one of the things I've seen with banks is also it allows, and you, I, you can see this in the stoplight tool as well, for example, is where it allows some of the business side and the, uh, and the developer side to sit down together and define uh, the business case, but in a way that's actually slotting it into the AP open API fields. Is that's correct? Yes, exactly. So we saw a lot of benefits of including business people into such discussions. And also not only business people, but somebody who is residing in the middle between development and integration teams who is helping our customers. They get a lot of ideas, get a lot of feedback, how things should look like, how they should be named, of course, because naming is hard, we all know. And uh, yeah, in all these things. And of course, the visual designer that Stoplight is providing is really helpful. Uh, in this case, uh, but in general, even with things like LinkedIn, we can also just introduce and enforce some certain terminology, certain API design decisions, and help all the stakeholders. Right. The, you also mentioned how a, a number of your partners are asking for the Postman collections as well. Um, how is the how is having an open API specification mm -hmm. readily available? How is that making it easier for you to then just um, share Postman mm -hmm. collections with with your partners? So uh, at the moment, of course, Postman collections, they coexist next to Open API. So ideally, you should be providing both. But uh, since Postman uh, can import your Open API files and uh, it will already provide a like, framework for all the endpoints and authentication information. And if you have some parameters in your Open API files, examples. So this is already super helpful. I also really hope that with Postman joining Open API initiative, uh, they will probably just uh, use the same format under the hood, like open the right. Postman collection. This nice. Is Great. Cool. Well, a real pleasure to hear your talk today. Thanks very much for being part of this, this session.